Jax was the first to speak to Pomni, especially in a manner that mocked her emotions. In the beginning, when he sees how outwardly scared she is, he pauses to let her speak, but also doesn't approach and keeps his distance, which is reasonable, as trying to get comfortable with someone who is scared and trusts no one can slightly worsen the situation. Soon after Pomni's arrival, when she asks about how to leave, Jax directly talks about how the team had been trapped for many years. Despite being the most honest and straightforward in this particular scenario, his narration of this idea was too fast, considering that Pomni clearly shows signs of panic. The information that she was received at the speed at which it was received makes Pomni hyperventilate and then tries to comfort herself with the thought that her situation might just be a dream. Throughout all this time, Jax maintains calm and replies, what do you say, baby? But not immediately, but rather when Pomni specifically looks at Jax in anticipation of his response. What makes Jax thoughtful is that he doesn't immediately try to turn off this thought when he knows she used it to comfort herself, but rather when he looks at him to get his approval or disapproval. The thought that he did not encourage her delusions in the future is the best option in the long run, however much anxiety it may bring. After that, Jax goes and talks to Kane about the possibility of an adventure specifically for Pomni and steps on the comedy mask of Grangla. Although this upsets Grangla, this is perhaps Jax's first kind act in the episode. If there is a mask that Grangle uses to pretend to be happy, it means that she is not coping with her emotions in a healthy way and is trying to bury them behind a mask. What makes this situation especially sad is that Grangle considers this mask something important to her as she has become so accustomed to hiding and burying her emotions. Breaking it more than it already was, Jax helped Grangle, although it could have hurt her feelings. We don't hear what Jax says, but looking through the scene frame by frame, we can logically guess what he is talking about in general. When you look at this particular moment frame by frame, Zubal nods his heed with a worried expression on his face, while Regatta looks a little down. For the context of what could have been talked about, Regatha tried to get more comfortable and got close to Pomni quite early, and comforting Pomni, it seems, did not work at all for Regatta. Another problem that Regatta faced was that he spoke in a rather uncertain and timid voice, which could make a person trust you even less than before, and make a person more scared and anxious than before. It would be logical if Jax gave her constructive criticism about her approach, but something quite specific that Zubal agrees with is wrong in her approach, although Ragata, it seems, tried to be kind. Jax acts as a kind of joker, takes Zubal's hand and uses it as a back scratch. This, of course, was unjustified, and Zubal, in response, strangles him. Even before strangling him, Zubal showed discomfort for a significant amount of time as a warning. In this interaction, they mutually seek each other's reaction, and even when Jax is strangled, he does not try to hurt Zubal or pull his hand away from himself to make her stop, which, I suppose, requires great self-control. Watching how Jax falls frame by frame, you can see that Zubal loosened her grip, showing how she did not want to cause Jax pain beyond a certain threshold. And as a final remark to the fact that Zubal strangles Jax, Zubal even gave the last visual cue to let go of her hand before she actually attacked Jax. During this part, Jax also asks Pomni if she saw an exit, to which Zubal also agrees that it's strange, and asks her about it too. Jax tells Pomni that if there was an exit, everyone would have already left, but I'm not sure if Zubal strangled him because of this or just because he grabbed her hand. After Pomni agrees to a new name, Kane agrees with the idea of a new adventure for Pomni, and Jax replies, I said that five minutes ago. When I first watched this episode, I thought, at least, of a few things that are not true in what Jack said. Firstly, I thought he said, you said that five minutes ago. And about Jack saying it in a tone that mocks Kane, however, I was wrong in both details. Instead, Jax is so confused that he squints and says it in a questioning tone, indicating that this is abnormal for Kane. When the Gloings take Zubal, Gangle is rightly worried, but has been in this simulation long enough to know that she is safe. A decent amount of conversation happens after Jax asks about eating pizza. And in the middle of the conversation, Gangle asks about Zubal, which leads me to the next point. When Gangle asks about Zubal, the conversation is already tied up. However, when Gloink attacks Jax, he splits the group to check on Kofmo, while Kinger and Gangle deal with what he calls the Zubal situation, not mentioning the Gloinks by name. Although it seemed that Jax ignored Gangle, in fact, he did not, 
and focused the situation on finding Zubal instead of dealing with the Gloinks, implying that Zubal is to some extent on the back burner of his mind. Let's move to the moment when he is in the hall with Pomni and Regatta to check on Kaufmo. Although he jokes that Pomni dreams of messing with her after a small monologue of Regatta about how people in the digital world go crazy and how activities help keep the mind healthy, he actively checks Pomni. Then he pats her twice to bring her out of a trance. When Pomni, Regatta, and Jax eventually see what is considered Kaufmo after being written off, Jax continues to distract Kaufmo for eight seconds, talking to him, and then runs away. Although at first glance the most reasonable solution would be to close the door. It seems to me that Jax reasoned that the doors would not be enough to stop an infected monster, and continue to run. When I thought about this for the first time, I thought it was quite selfish, but when I think about it, I feel that closing the door would not have been the best option, as it would have given nothing. However, it seems to me that Jax should have told Pomni and Regatta to run. The reason I think Jax should have told both of them to run is that Regatta and Pomni are both prone to freeze in fear, and this means that active encouragement to flee would have been the optimal choice, but I also think that Jax may have thought that these two are already adults and sensible enough to run away, but they still decided not to do it, perhaps because they froze in fear and didn't know what to do. When Jax asks about Kafmo's well-being, he speaks too sarcastically about how he is doing well. In this situation, Jax uses his usual sarcasm to hide the thought that something urgent is happening. Kinger replies, Well, it's nice to know that he's not completely insane. This does not exactly show that Kinger does not understand sarcasm, but rather through Jax's sarcasm, he could perceive it as that Kaufmo is in bad condition, but not so terrible that he was written off. After that, Kaufmo growls, but you need to turn up the volume to hear him. Jax is a bit worried, so he throws a bowling ball at Kinger to make him fall into a pit. For Kinger and Gangla, this might not have been something out of the ordinary and would have been perceived as Jax's usual meanness, while Jax could have made them worry by expressing what he really feels. As for the note that when Jax threw the bowling ball, Jax threw the ball only with his hand and upper body, implying that he was not going to throw with full force. And that's all. You will see the continuation of the theory in the next video. Goodbye for now. Jax, possibly, is a character who lets his emotions control his actions in the game. His anger might be a result of his resentment that he can't control or predict all aspects of the game. This might be especially true if he encounters situations that he perceives as unfair or unpredictable. Perhaps Jax starts to see the game as a way to express his anger and frustration, which he can't express in the real world. He might use the game as a means to reflect his inner conflicts and struggles. However, as he continues to play, he might start to realize that his actions in the game have real consequences. This could lead to him starting to feel guilt or shame for his actions, which in turn might intensify his anger and frustration. In the end, Jax might come to understand that he needs to learn to control his emotions and actions, both in the game and in real life. This could lead to his personal growth and development as a character. This could be an interesting direction for his character in future plots.